When carrying out exploratory data analysis, have you wanted a quick and easy way to visualise the relationships between the variables in your data set? If you have answered yes, then today's Python tutorial may be of interest to you. Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to look at the Seaborn pair plot. The pair plot allows us to take a data frame and visualise the variables within it and understand the relationships between those variables all within a single figure. This not only creates a nice visualisation, but it also helps us summarise a large amount of data into a single figure. And as the saying goes, a picture can paint a thousand words. So let's hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can create a pair plot. Here we are within our Jupyter Notebook, and the first thing that I'm going to do is import the libraries that we're going to be working with. In this case, we're going to be using Seaborn, which is our data visualisation library, and pandas, which will be used to load in our data and store it. Then I have set the Seaborn grid style to dark grid, and next I will load in some well log data from the Force 2020 machine learning competition that focused on predicting lithology from well log measurements. Don't worry if you're not familiar with this data set, as what I'm going to show you can be applied to almost any other data set type. However, if you do want to follow along, you can grab the data and this notebook from my GitHub repository, which is linked down below in the video description. I've also done a little bit of cleaning here by removing some of the excess values that are over 200 for this variable called GR. Once we've loaded in the data, we can then view the data frame, and then we can see that we've got our different columns within that data frame. We can see that we've got the well name, the depth measurement, some geological groupings, and then we've got our well log measurements, which are all numeric, and then we've got our lithology or lift column, which is categorical, and we will be using that to colour in our pair plot. Now that the data has been loaded in, we can move on to creating our first pair plot. To get a pair plot of all the numeric values within our data set, we simply call upon sns.pairplot and then pass in df to the parentheses. So once this runs, we get back a large figure containing many subplots. So we've got scatter plots of each of our variables. So for example, we've got our depth, row B and GR and along the Y axis. And we've also got them along the X axis where we've got our depth, row B and GR. And along the diagonals where we've got GR plotted against GR, we end up with the histogram of that data. If we look at our first variable, depth underscore md, which represents the depth along a borehole, we can see when it is compared to itself, we get back the histogram, and if we go along the columns, we can see depth is plotted against each of the other variables within the data frame. If we look at the rest of the data, we can see that we have numerous relationships. However, when working with a large number of variables, the pair plot can become cumbersome to work with. So one way to deal with that is to only plot the variables that we are interested in. And in order to do this, we first need to create a list. For example, here I have created a new variable called calls to plot and created a list containing row B, GR, NFI, DTC, and LIF. The first four of these variables are numeric and the last is categorical, which we will use later to color in our plot. So to use this list, we call upon sns.pairplot again, call upon our data frame, and then in the square brackets, we pass in our new variable call calls to plot. And when we run this, we get back a much smaller figure with only the variables that we are interested in. So we've got row B, GR, NFI, and DTC, and we don't have LIF as it is a categorical variable. So instead of having a histogram along the diagonal, we can also display a kernel density estimation instead. And this is just another way of looking at the distribution of the data. So we can do that by calling upon the same code that we had before, followed by a comma and then passing diag kind is equal to kde. And now when we get the figure back, we can see that the diagonal has now changed to our kernel density estimation. And as I said, this is just another way to visualize the distribution of the data. If we want to identify relationships within the scatter plots, we can apply a linear regression line, which is simply done by adding the keyword kind and assigning it to reg, which is short for regression. When we run this, we will now see that we have a partial line appearing in, on each of the scatter plots. However, as the line color is the same as a point color, we need to change this to make it more visible. And we can do this by adding in a few keyword arguments. We can change the line color of the regression line by using the plot underscore kws keyword argument. 
by adding that into our call to the pair plot. And we will set that equal to a dictionary. And we start a dictionary by using the curly braces and then we call upon the key within that. In this case, we will be calling upon line underscore KWS, which is short for line key words. And then we follow that by a colon and then we call upon another dictionary, which is going to call upon the properties for the line. So in this case, I'm going to call upon the color followed by a colon and then set that to red. So when we run this code, we get back the pair plot with a red line through our points. And this just makes it much easier to see a regression line through our data. We can see that some of the variables row B correlated with N phi has a, a relatively strong correlation, whereas some of the other variables such as DTC versus N phi shows almost a bimodal distribution. So we may want to split that up further and run regressions on different categories of the data or find another way to explain the relationship. So if we have a categorical variable within our data frame, we can use that to visually enhance the plots and see the trends and distributions for each category. So within this data set, we have a variable called LIF, which represents different lithologies that have been identified from well log measurements. If we are using a subset of our data frame, we need to ensure that the calls to plot line that I mentioned above contains the variable that we want to color by. To use that variable, all we do is add a hue argument and we will set that equal to lif, which is our lithology column. And what we get back is a pair plot colored by each of the categories within that variable. If we have a closer look at the data, we have shales in blue, sandstone in green, and limestone in red. And from these, we can gain some insights into our data. If we look at the gamma ray KDE, we can see that we have a large peak in our shales at around 100 API. And we also have a smaller pink peak around 25 API. So right away, we can get an idea of the range for each of our lithologies. Before we move on to the next section, if you are enjoying this content, please click on that like button down below. And if you want to see more content from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. It does help the channel out immensely. Now that we have covered the basics of getting the plot to appear, we can start to stylize our plot with a few additional arguments. So first up, we can change the diagonal styling. So our diagonal plot here. And if we keep it as a histogram, we can call upon diag underscore kws and we pass in the dictionary of what we want to change. So in this example, if we just want to change the color of the histogram along the diagonal, we'd call upon color, followed by a colon, and then we would set the color that we want. So in this case, I will set this to red, and the plot that we get back now has a red histogram. So this is just all aesthetics, so if you want to make the plot look different or you've got a certain style in mind, then this is the way that you would achieve this. So as we're working with a histogram, we can also call upon some of the usual histogram attributes. So here we've got their diagonal keywords, and if I want to say, for example, set the bin, the number of bins within our histogram to a different number to what is set as default, we can then call upon bins and set this to say five, for example. And we can see the difference that this makes to our histogram. We can see that data is now divided into five bins. As well as styling the diagonals, we can also style the points. And we can do that by using another keyword argument. In this case, we will call upon plot underscore KWS, and then we pass in another dictionary. So again, I will change the color, and I will set the color to green, and we can see that we get our pair plot back with the colors that we specified. And we can also call upon other arguments such as the size, so if I go back here and add in a new dictionary item and we call upon S, which is the abbreviation for size, and we set that to say five, which should give us a very fine point. And when the figure is returned, we can see that the points are much smaller and we can see some better definition within our individual data clusters. We can see that we've got a much refined outline to these points and it was harder before to see where the data was as it is much larger points, and some of those points could obscure the points below it. And finally, we can control the size of our figure in a very simple way. If I add in height, and then set this to 2, for example, and run that, we get back a much smaller figure. 
And if we wanted to control the width, for example, at the moment it is set to be exactly the same as the height. And we can control this by using the keyword argument called aspect. So if we set that to two, then what we're going to get back is a plot that is two times wide as it is high. And there we have it, we've seen how to use a seaborne pair plot in Python. It is a very easy to use plot and can give us so much information within a single figure. If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to click on that like button down below. And if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.